I started with virtual reality three years ago with my first VR documentary, Clouds Over Cedra, that I made with the United Nations in partnership with Chris Milk's company Within and Here Be Dragons. Or back then it was Verse and Verse Works. And since January, I started my own company, Lightshed, which is a virtual reality and social impact startup, and uh, made our first production, The Last Goodbye, which world premiered in Tribeca, and it was in partnership with Steven Spielberg's Shaw Foundation about a Holocaust survivor. And that was a walk around experience in Vive, not just 360. So uh, now I'm um, working with Johns Hopkins University where I've designed and will lead a new concentration on immersive storytelling and emerging technologies. I, um, when, I, when I met the program director, <laughs> of um, Johns Hopkins, of the Film and Media MA. Uh, I told him I would only do this if we could make products with students uh, that were game-changing, that were interesting. Because I wasn't very interested in having an academic program where we're just talking to students and nothing is happening. Because I want to make stuff. I think at the core of it, I'm a creator, and I get excited by working with other creators. So. I told them uh, we need to fund projects each semester. And this semester we funded, to launch the program, uh, Tora Musgrove's project, Freedom Fighter. And she's a student at Johns Hopkins. And I worked together with her and Superbright, which is another company in Brooklyn, and with Egal Nasima, who's also going to be an advisor and professor in the program. We all worked together to basically figure out how we can make an AR app for Baltimore. Uh, because so much of what we want to do at Johns Hopkins is not be in our ivory tower, is to be diverse, but to be connected with the issues that affect the city of Baltimore. Baltimore, uh, as your viewers may or may not know, uh, had suffered some riots in 2015. Is um, The origin of the Black Lives Matter movement uh, is a real hotbed of not only activism, but solutions for a lot of racial and social justice. And it's not just now. There is this storied civil rights history that goes back that many people don't know, that many young people in Baltimore don't know. So Tora actually saw The Last Goodbye, which is about a Holocaust survivor, Pincus Guter, and she said, why aren't we doing this for civil rights leaders? Like, why can't we memorialize them? Why can't we make testimonies using new media? So. She thought about augmented reality. Uh, and the idea is, is really brilliant. Uh, I think we're all trying to figure out storytelling and augmented reality. But the idea was to go to a corner of Baltimore that was uh, affected by the riots in 2015, affected by decay and urban decay, yet at one point had a, a great historical sig significance for, for Baltimore. So uh, we built it where you go to a corner of Baltimore and you use your phone with the AR kit and the old NAACP headquarters comes up out of the ashes, out of this rubble, you know? Right now it's rubble and it's in decay, and you see what it was like before. And Lily Mae Jackson, who is an incredible woman civil rights leader, who was a mentor to Thurgood Marshall, who met with Martin Luther King to talk about nonviolence, she comes out and almost gives you this sort of history and you know, comes back to really tell you what was going on in that street corner. And so our idea is to kind of, uh, that's the first sort of geo-specific one. Um, it will eventually have something where you can do things on your desktop, but we really want to make it for the neighborhood of Baltimore. And so we did it with, you know, some school children, and they're like, oh, this is like, Bla this is like Pokemon Go, but for our neighborhood, you know, uh, that it can kind of like, they can have a tour eventually that they could do it. And we have ideas that after you do the tour and you collect points, um, rather than just collect points, these points, uh, we're really examining that we can provide discounts for Black-owned businesses or for other historical landmarks, like there's a museum and a bookshop that's really important. So the idea is to kind of let augmented reality have people re-engage with their own history and hopefully attract more attention and enterprise to this sort of uh, area. Yes, yes. I think a uh, majority of people, um, uh, the you know, smartphone smartphone penetration is still very high. Uh, so there is you know a lot of people who do have smartphones that could do it. Uh, this could work on a tablet as well, 
but we're making it work mostly for um, both iOS and then eventually Android. So this is something that we're going to also look into partner with Baltimore Public Schools so that it becomes a part of history lessons. And if it's necessary, then we can figure out a way to get, you know, Androids donated or if there aren't those sort of things that the students already have. But this is something we want people to have themselves and to be able to use on things that they have existing uh, in, in their pocket. We will have it launch in December. That's when it will launch on the uh, App Store. And right now we're just trying to like work out the corpse and beta test it with a lot of young people to kind of get their inputs too, because we want this to be community driven. We want to get their ideas. And you know, young people who actually use it and do it, you know, you just learn so much about it. I mean, one of them that we learned was, should we make it in landscape mode? Or should we make it, you know, how are people actually doing it? Uh, I know there are a lot of people, uh, I don't know if you know Julie Young, who I really admire, who's part of the VR, uh, she's part of Shift and VR for Women group. And, she put out a meme saying, do not make AR apps in landscape mode. And I ended up making one in landscape mode. And then I was like, oh my God, Julie told me not to do that. And now we're going to see that maybe it can be in landscape mode, but it can be like, they'll work together. Like it won't, it'll shift. So we're, we're going to see, we have to do, it's all totally new. I mean, I'm, I'm mostly a VR filmmaker and now to work and try to produce something in AR I think it's going to have its whole source of challenges. So before we launch it in early December, we just really want to make sure that it's there. But the point of it is I want to show that this is what this program at Johns Hopkins can do, you know. And this is why people would come, because we would work together, like it's me, it's with Gal, but we want to work, I'm a, you know, for, for our immersive summit and for our advisors, we have Jessica Brillhard, we have Yelena Rachinsky, we have some of the best VR, AR creators on the planet and the idea is for us to partner with students on these types of projects so that we create cutting edge projects that deal with social issues because that's what we want to do. And that's what motivates me. Okay. Thank you, Nita.